Hey, so in engineering economics, we get to talk about the money. That's right. And when you pass the FE, you might feel excited, right? But what the, the cool thing is, you'll get to be able to say to your boss, or maybe at least think it, right? You'll be able to follow this and say, you know what? Show me the money. There you go. <laughs> right? So classic line from a classic movie, right? But here we are and we have engineering economics where we get to talk about the money. And really, yeah, that's it. It's 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 what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking the dollars and cents and looking at it. So the economics in the engineering context in the FE review, we're going to look at the time value money cost analyses and uncertainty. And really two of these go together. The cost and cost analyses, these go together because somebody who you're going to work for is eventually going to want to know how much is it going to cost and does it make sense, right? So that's what we're going to look at in this topic. And just for another little piece of humor here, but if time's money, then an ATM is a time machine? Well, who knows? But what we're going to look at is this equation. I mean, this equation really defines uh, engineering economics. The future value of an investment at some interest rate is going to be the present value times 1 plus i to the n. And this equation is so critical. I mean, if we look at the equations that show up in the FE reference handbook, you'll see all these equations over here. But the crazy thing is, if you look at them closely, what do you see? You see that one plus i to the n in some shape or form in all of them, right? And these equations look kind of ugly and gross. And sometimes, you know, even when we teach this in our program, we teach it a lot with spreadsheets. But the thing is, on the exam, you don't have a spreadsheet. You have to know how to use a table. You have to be able to look up these tables and they really simplify using those equations. So you don't have to go through all the equations and worry about the exponents and order of operations in your calculator, but you do have to use the right table. Okay, so engineering economics uses these and uses the different factors here. You know, the present value given the future, or the future get value given the present value. And you look them up, you look them up for the uh, number of years in the right interest table. And you can use these factors to solve the problems, right? But really what we also want to take a look at with engineering economics and the whole purpose of engineering economics is to do cost analyses, right? So I, I put these two together because what we're looking at typically are all the costs associated with a project, like in this BIM model, right? This is the idea that you can take all the, you know, all the whole project from concept through construction and, you know, all the way through operations and maintenance and look at all the costs associated with that, do the whole life cycle, but also look at the benefits, right? Because that's what we're looking for in a benefit cost analysis. And really what we're looking at in a benefit cost analysis is saying the benefits should exceed the estimated cost in order for this project to be a good one to go for it, right? I mean, that makes sense. But in any project, there's going to be some what? Some uncertainty. And this is where it gets kind of interesting because you can't really predict the future. You know, you might have a crystal ball, but you can't predict the future. And I saw this actually play out because it was, it was interesting. I got to update a study at one point and we were looking at average retail prices of kilowatt hours, megawatt hours of uh, an energy generation, right? And, you know, back in the 80s, you'll see there's a big steep curve there where energy prices started going way up, right? And what was projected was those costs were going to keep going to keep going up. So you have the blue line down on the bottom, which shows the the nominal price, the the non-adjusted you know cents per kilowatt hour. So it starts at like two back in the 60s and goes up to you know the the, the 10 range uh, by the time 2010 rolls along. And there's that steep curve in the middle. But the orange line, this is the interesting one, is, is the one that is adjusted to today's dollars. And you can see, if anything, the cost has actually gone down or, or stayed steady over time um, when you compare it to today's dollars. But the thing in the 80s is what they were looking at was, well, what happens if our, you know, if our growth kind of continues here and the rates still go up? Well, that's where there's uncertainty because you can predict the benefits of a project. OK, you can predict how much money you're going to make from a project, but it's only as good as your predictions. So a lot of times when you're doing analyses like this, you're looking at some sort of sensitivity. Well, what happens if the project doesn't do as well and you run a couple different scenarios, right? So you can get a, an idea of the low end, a high end. And that's one way to kind of, you know, capture uh, the, the benefit cost analysis on a project. So. The real question is, right, when you graduate, um, how much money do you need to set aside for retirement?
Just say, just ask it, right? I mean, if you come up and set aside $5,000 for retirement, just $5,000, that's it, nothing else, and, and work for the next 40 years, the, the stock market typically over the past you know 100 years or so has averaged about 10%. So if you leave that $5,000 and don't touch it, leave it there for 40 years, how much is it going to be? Well, this is where we get to use that equation that we started with, right? The future value, present value, one plus I to the end. So if we start plugging numbers in, you know, put the 5,000 in for the present value, one plus I, which is 10%, 0.1 to the 40, that gives us a value. And if we want to, we can even use the table for this. I mean, this one's easy enough. We could plug it in our calculator, but we could go to the table, right? So we come to the table, we look up, you know, the 10% the table, the future given the present, we look at a 40 year and we get our factor of 40. 45.29 or 2593. Okay. And then we can plug that in, right? That's one plus 0 0.1 to the 40. And what that gives us is for that $5,000, guess how much it turns into? It turns into almost a quarter of a million dollars, right? So this is kind of crazy. It, it's like it turns into a, a tremendous amount. But guess what? If you started saving when you were uh, in, you know, 20 years left to, uh, to retirement, guess how much you'd make? Well, I'll let you look that up, but spoiler alert, it's like 30 grand, right? An extra 20 years of compounding interest goes from 30 grand up to uh, almost a quarter of a million dollars. So the lesson learned, start saving early and you'll uh, be able to retire, hopefully early as well. But hopefully you'll pass that exam, you'll be thinking in your head, show me the money boss, and you'll be able to go forward from there. All right, so until next time, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.